This is a, a combination, a joint effort between Zoe Montaner and Sophia Liebline. I think I said that right. Zoe is the founder and chief compassion officer of Compassionate Santa Monica, building a compassionate city and spread, spreading the golden rule since 2013. Sophia is a senior at Crossroads for the Arts and Sciences in Santa Monica. Looking to make a difference, she collaborated with Compassionate Santa Monica on this Petra Kucha as part of her culminating senior project. And I didn't ask you, Sophia, are you going to college in the fall? Yes, I am. Where are you going? I'm going to Kenyan College. I might take a gap year and travel around Europe, but that's to be decided. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Well, before we start, we want to also bring to your awareness that it's Mental Health Awareness Month. And that's why we're wearing green ribbons and I'm wearing a green jacket. And I want to say something because Albert Einstein said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. So the environment and insanity and mental health are really intertwined, and we want to talk about that. We believe that a sustainable city is a compassionate city. We believe that a compassionate city is possible when every man, woman, and child treats others as they wish to be treated. We be with dignity, equity, and respect. We believe that all human beings are born with a capacity for compassion and that it must be cultivated for human beings to survive and thrive. We know that we can collectively overcome the challenges that we face as a community. Second slide. Thank you. Oh, we okay. have more time. The golden rule is not an option. It's our common key to survival. This is a quote by Karen Armstrong. A green light bulb idea went into my head. Treat the planet and others the way you want to be treated. The golden rule is a universal principle shared by nearly all cultural, spiritual, religious, and secular tra uh, traditions on earth. It should be followed to ins ensure global success. And when you're challenged to practice the golden rule, remember Michelle Obama, when they go low, you go high. <laughs> so let's apply it to our planet and our sustainability practices. So the golden rule of do unto others as you would have them do unto you has roots in many scriptures. There's also a commandment, love your neighbor as you like to be loved yourself. Bishop Michael Curry's sermon from the royal wedding today said, and he quoted my, um, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., we must discover the power of love, the redemptive power of love. And when we discover that, we will be able to make of this old world a new world, for love is the only way. There is power in love, done underestimated and done over-sentimentalized. We must love our planet. To love ourselves, basically. Diversity. Okay, so <laughs> diversity might be the hardest thing for a society to live with and perhaps the most dangerous thing for a society to live without. So you might be wondering, why is Zoe bringing diversity into this room right now? I didn't bring it. It was in the room before I walk into stage and it will still be here and out there when we finish Climate Fest. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about diversity. We include the Compassion Games. Tell me about the Compassion Games. So basically, the Compassion Games is an, a, a civic engagement experience that invites people all over the world to inspire one another with acts of compassion that better our lives, our communities, our world. Since 2013, this civic engagement model has transformed schools, communities, even the women's prison in Riverside, California, promoting the golden rule through different sectors, including the environment. Our environment needs more than just green sustainability practices. We should also be kind to each other, and with that, the environment will be greener. On April 5th, we had a 24-hour global virtual celebration of the Golden Rule focused on the environment. People all over the world addressed why the Golden Rule matters now, as they shared how people, organizations, and governments can use this principle to better the world. We work with the United Nations Sustainable Goals to achieve the Golden Rule and build a compassionate city in Santa Monica. Have you heard about sustainable development? 
I have. Have you? <laughs> yes, I research it. I learned that sustainable development is the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations. Uh, sustainable development calls for efforts towards being an inclusive, sustainable, and resilient future for the people and for the planet. For sustainable development to be achieved, it is crucial to harmonize two core elements, social inclusion and environmental protection. Eradicating poverty in all its forms is also an indispensable requirement for sustainable development, something that we need to do. Yes, we do. Governments, businesses, and civil society, together with the United Nations, have started to mobilize efforts to achieve the sustainable development agenda by 2030. Universal, inclusive, and indivisible, the agenda calls for actions to improve the lives of people everywhere. Compassion at Santa Monica has added the 17 sustainable development goals to our own agenda. So let's take a look at them. Seven of the 17 goals are part of the climate change. Climate change is already impacting public health, and that's where mental health comes. Food and water security. Climate change left in check will roll back the development gains we have made over the last decades, making further gains impossible. Investments in sustainable development will also help address climate change by reducing greenhouse gas emissions and building climate resilience. And I've heard a lot of water and emissions today, but we have not heard enough about plastic. Something so we really need to talk about. We do this by creating strategic collaborative partnerships like me and Sophia, mm -hmm. and I want to salute the peeps from Santa Monica College that are also doing great work yeah. with plastic. We're getting a lot of help from Santa Monica College. We're partnering with you. So, why should you care about the UN Sustainable? Yes, why? Goals? Well, because the SDGs are not legally binding. Um, also, governments are way more, it's easier for them to establish national frameworks um, for the achievement of the 17 goals. Cities have the primary responsibility to follow up and review the progress made in implementing these goals, which will require quality, accessible, and timely data collection. We must hold our city accountable to them. Mm. From Al Gore's Inconvenience Sequel, let's see how we can do that. So, hashtag be inconvenient. That's a really big hashtag right now. We're gonna read you the things that you can do. Speak truth to power. Become a climate reality leader. Talk about climate change. Write about climate change. Switch your community to renewables. Make your business more sustainable. Run for office. Oops. <laughs> walk the walk at home. Eat with the planet in mind. Vote with your dollars. Let's get inconvenient, people. One of our first strategic partners is Films for the Planet, an on-demand media platform designed to produce and measure results. So through films, we you know, contemplate, have conversations, and together we can create action by watching these incredible films that have been made. For example, the film Rise of the Eco Warriors raised half a million dollars on donations in biodiversity projects. It also became a tool for curricula in over 70,000 students and 20,000 schools. So we want to partner with the Santa Monica Malibu School District to make this um, platform available for our schools. Mm -hmm. So, um, our second partner is The Nature of Cities. Uh, the Nature of Cities is described as an idea hive, an international platform for transdisciplinary dialogue and expression committed to creating better cities for all, something I think we need. Yes, and I am honored to be one of their jurists for their 2018 Stories of Cities, which are uh, stories of the natures of city envisioning 2099 in a prize for urban flash action. We didn't have a story from Santa Monica, but we hope that from now on we are gonna have Santa Monica presence. Mm. Not a single, um, yes. So. This year, uh, we had over 1,100 stories from 103 countries around the world. So speaking of cities, the big question we have right now is what kind of city we want? What kind of city we need? What kind of city we deserve? One without plastic, that is for sure. Mm. After all, the Earth Day founder, Dennis Hayes, called for an end to plastic pollution. So I think we should talk a little bit more about plastic, you know, seeing as you guys are all here and want to listen. Um, there's a lot of issues with plastic right now. It's an environmental 
issue. Plastic's dangerous. It's a health risk. Chemicals in plastics are known endocrine disruptors, and this common thread might explain why we are seeing these problems in many species of animals globally, including humans. One of the world's most proven bad news endocrine disruptors are BPAs. BPA is just one of at least a thousand chemicals or chemical mixtures um, that can tinker with our body's delicate systems, messing things up in a bad way. And I spoke briefly today with our city manager, Recall, who told us in August they're going to revise an ordinance. However, the ordinance is weak for our taste. We need to ban plastic bottles beyond straws and also plastic containers and bottles. Knives and forks, we need to get rid of all of those. They are utensils as well. Issues. Okay, next slide, please. Oh. If we're gonna do policy, go big or go home. <laughs> the National Geographic cover this month of Plastic of Planet came to our attention. This is beyond the sound bites that we normally use to describe environmental hazard. On June 6, on World Oceans Day, at the Regal LA Live at 6.30 p.m., along with over 50 cities in California, we're going to watch Blue, the documentary, nationwide. BlueTheFilm.org for more information. Book your tickets today using the code COMPASSION and you will get a discount. Um, Blue is a cinematic song for our oceans, beautiful, intimate, and grand, fearlessly truth-telling, yet passionately hopeful. See this film, and you want to rise up to the waves. So, now that we've discussed that film, we're going to get back to plastic. Um, we have a petition um, to end the, to ban the use of plastic straws, plastic knives and forks from uh, SMM, USD, SMC, Santa Monica City. It's really, really, really important and something that could benefit all of our lives. So please sign the petition. You know, we really want you to. I want to bring to the attention that Santa Monica College already had a petition that raised over 25,000 signatures for banning plastic in Santa Monica. So, the public health impact of global warming is very serious, as we know. By spreading proven public health measures, we can build a healthy and thriving community. As I've said, global warming is a public health crisis <laughs> and also plastic pollution is. Changes that happen during development are far less reversible than those occurring later. Mm -hmm. You can go back and rewire the brain. It affects women more than men mm -hmm. because our hormonal makeup is more complex. Mm -hmm. So all you can do now is Everyone needs to take part. We can't do this alone. Everyone has to engage. It is time to practice the golden rule in deeds and actions beyond the rhetoric and clever sound bites. This is no time for politicized agendas of exclusion. You know, we need cities like people are integrated living entities. We need to band together. We invite you to advocate, volunteer, and donate to Compassionate Santa Monica to make Santa Monica a model city of compassion. Thank you. Thank you. you.